Welcome to Oxcart Farm Video Adventures. This adventure is at Lake Oconee in Georgia. We're fishing for catfish near the Highway 278 bridge. I caught this beautiful four pound blue cat, my personal best, Sunday morning the second day of our trip. Many lakes, rivers, and streams are polluted by urban and agricultural runoff making the fish too contaminated to eat more than once a week or once a month, according to the Georgia Department of Natural Resources. And some have a do not eat at all warning. So we chose Lake Oconee for our catfish catch, clean, and cook because there are no restrictions on eating the fish caught here. Let's see what we catch. We've located a spot just upstream of the 278 bridge. I'm now attaching a liter and five aught circle hook to the swivel at the end of our Carolina rig that we put together before we left home. The leader has a perfection loop tied on the end, so it's an easy deal to thread the hook and the perfection loop through the swivel and then draw it up tight for a secure connection. My job was fishing for bait. The first thing I caught was this eaten sized shell cracker, but not for us to eat, for the catfish. Trusting in the old saying, big bait means big fish, I'm using the shell cracker Sonia caught and hooking it up on the 5 aught circle hook. That'll be the first bait in the water and I hope that a flathead will get interested. Now we're fishing. The shell cracker is in the water alive and kicking. The slip sinker of the Carolina rig will allow it to move around actively and there ought to be some cats out there that are hungry enough to grab it and make a run. We'll see what happens. You can see the channel marker in the background. We're fishing in a little bit more shallow water, but it still ought to be a good hunting ground for the catfish. The second rod is rigged and baited with cut bait. In this case, it's a headpiece cut off a of Norway mackerel. If catfish like stinky bait, they're going to love this one. Shell cracker in the water, mackerel in the water. Now we're going to try and catch some more live bait. In the meantime, the third rod will be baited up with a thawed bluegill caught on a previous fishing trip. Saturday evening was peaceful. It certainly wasn't interrupted by catfish, but we did get some more live bait. It wasn't until we were getting ready to pull the lines for the night something big hit the live shell cracker. It was pitch dark when suddenly the shell cracker rod was almost dragged into the water. This won't be on film because any light brought choking swarms of mystery insects. I regret there's no video recording the fight with this catfish. At 10 pounds it gave us quite a tussle. Next time we'll remember to bring a red light so we won't be overwhelmed by the swarms of bugs. This photograph was taken after we returned home. Great little catfish, my personal best blue cat, and I think it's going to be tasty in the smoker. Early Sunday morning, we cast the lines back out with some previously frozen mackerel heads and bluegill. It looks a little overcast, so I got my phone out to check the weather 
and see what we had to look forward to. We had used some bread to try and catch additional bait fish. That seemed to attract this duck. I have no idea what kind of critter this is. Looks like some sort of domestic escapee. Certainly ain't a mallard. My rod, baited with a small live bluegill, started moving. So I started reeling and I caught this. Four pound blue cat. My personal best. I'm splitting some mixed hardwoods, oak, hickory, and mulberry to set up the fire upon which we will fry Sonia's catfish. To do the splitting, I'm using an otherwise retired camp hatchet and a light sledgehammer. Since it's metal on metal, I'm wearing safety glasses for protection. A metal wedge is also helpful for splitting the stubborn pieces. While Rodney splits the bigger logs, I build the foundation for the fire. I start by tearing birch bark into strips. The next layer will be wood shavings saved from Rodney's work on the bow core. After that, I put twigs gathered from the backyard. On top of the twigs, I put larger sticks to build a teepee shape. Smaller pieces of the split hardwood are next, layered over the sticks. Finally, I add larger pieces of split hardwood to really feed the fire. I light the edges of the birch bark strips and they burst into flames, igniting the wood shavings, the twigs, the sticks, and the hardwood pieces.
once the fire has fairly started, we do some cleanup and get ready for skinning and filleting the catfish. I will add the larger pieces of hardwood to build up the fire and produce coals for cooking the fish. Now Rodney and I set up a folding table to use as a prep station for skinning and filleting the catfish and mixing the beer batter. When I was coming up, we always skinned our catfish by nailing them to a tree. Got an old piece of sycamore here to simulate it. Sonia's getting it nailed in place so it'll be secure while I skin it. And she's going to help hold down the sycamore so it's stable. Rodney has severed the catfish skin behind the head and now he's using pliers to pull the skin off. It's a little tough getting started but once it gets going the process goes really smoothly all the way from the head to the tail. With the skin removed, it's a straightforward matter to use a flexible bladed fillet knife to cut boneless fillets from either side of the catfish. A catfish of this size could be cooked whole but the fillets are a lot more convenient and can be cut into serving size pieces. While Rodney finishes filleting the catfish, I mix the ingredients for the rub that we will use on the fillets before dipping them in the batter. You can find the full recipe on foodnetwork.com. It's called Big Daddy's Deep Fried Catfish. Now I mix the dry ingredients for the batter before adding the beer.
Now for the best part of the batter, the beer. While you can use a variety of beers in beer batter, this recipe calls for amber. Our cooking utensil for this project is a cowboy skillet. That's a sheet steel skillet as opposed to cast iron. It's lightweight, long handled, and has plenty of room for the fish fillets to go into it. It's great for cooking outdoors, either at home or on a camping trip. I coat each fillet with the rub before dipping it in the batter. The battered fillets then go into the hot oil in the cowboy skillet. The size and shape of the cowboy skillet make it easy to turn each one of the fillets to ensure they cook golden brown on all sides. I can't let Rodney have all the fun of turning the fillets. I love to cook over an open fire too. The fillets look crispy on the outside, but we're going to cover them with a lid to be sure that they cook through. Golden brown on the outside and flaky on the inside. Now I serve the fillets up for me and Rodney. How anyone can turn their back on potato salad to go along with their catfish, I'll never know. As long as I've got lemon for the catfish, I don't need any potato salad.
This meal is one of the highlights of our catfishing trip. Lots of fun catching them, lots of fun cooking them, and lots of fun eating them. We still have the 10 pounder in the freezer that we're going to cook in the smoker. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and also subscribe. See, See you soon! soon.